government of Puerto Rico has proposed to build this 93-mile pipeline. The project is a, a, a natural gas pipeline that will traverse the island of Puerto Rico. And our clients are very concerned because the pipeline is going to go through some very sensitive, fragile areas in their mountainous region of the, of the country. It, it, it couldn't have picked a, a worse route if you wanted to do sort of maximum environmental damage. You, you really don't have an idea of it on the ground until you've actually seen where they plan on building the pipeline, what, how steep the cliffs are. And uh, you know, we had some prospective clients take us out to the actual locations to see the elevation. So this is a 100-mile pipeline, right, cutting right through the heart of Puerto Rico? Absolutely. It's lots of massive diversity of uh, plant life, trees, et cetera, birds. The pipeline will impact more than 30 endangered species. In some cases, some people are, will be expropriated in order to build it. Our goal in this case is to try to convince, first of all, the Army Corps of Engineers that has to issue a permit for the construction of the project, that this is a really bad idea. Hopefully we can convince the agencies or the government to back off. If, if they don't, though, the whole point of having a clinic like ours is to go to court if that's what we have to do. And we're building, we think, a really strong case, legally and factually, to show that the approval of this project violates federal law. As a student coming into the process, it's been an enormous amount of work and reading. And We're there to catch them if they fall and help them back up and, and, and point out how they could do things better and things they might have overlooked. But they're apprentice lawyers. They're not licensed to practice law, but they're functioning just like a licensed lawyer. And they know that there are consequences for their clients if they don't get it right. That's a very different level of accountability than you get in a classroom exercise where you're taking an exam and you're getting a grade or you're writing a paper. Here, it's not a matter of whether you get a B or an A. It's a matter of whether or not you win or lose the case. That's an order of magnitude difference. And, and it makes all the difference in terms of the learning. It's been really hard um, yeah. digging down into the facts. Um, I've had to become a water expert, a wetlands expert, a wildlife expert, um, and it's been really challenging. Vermont Law School's clinic is unique in that they allow you to do um, full-time work in a clinic as opposed to taking it for four or five credits. So instead of trying to balance a really um, complicated case like this um, with two or three other classes, you can focus all your time on, on just one matter. So Chris, what's been the highlight of your clinical experience so far, would you say? The ability to get real world experience, learning how to be a lawyer and work towards it and get to, getting to work with people as opposed to maybe if you started as a first year associate in a firm, you might be you know, in the basement, you know, in a cubicle working, you know, you don't get the that. skills that they learned, you know, how to write, how to communicate, how to negotiate, uh, how to meet deadlines, how to manage your time. These are all really practical skills that they learn in the clinic. And so when they arrive at a permanent employment, some legal office, um, they don't have to be trained. They don't have to be told what to do. And that's of an immeasurable value to employers. I wanted to do environmental law, and I'm doing environmental law, and hopefully that's, that's what I will do in, in my life. And I, I've been privileged to learn from, from the best. So.